All right, we're going to continue with our media availabilities here at Martinsville. We are now joined by Alex Bowman, driver of the number 48 Hendrick Motorsports Chevrolet, who is the winner here last fall at Martinsville. We are going to go straight to questions for Alex. If you have a question, please raise your hand. We'll get a mic to you. We'll start up front with Matt. Matt Weaver, Racing America. Um, I know we really won't know until practice, but you've gotten around here pretty well since joining Hendrick Motorsports. Is there any kind of concern or thought that this new car is going to completely take away some of the, the good habits you have here, the, the, the feel that you have, and it's no longer going to be basically your Martinsville? Uh, yes and no. I think – so I, I did get to run the Wheel Force car here last year, which was a next-gen car. And, um, you know, I think running Richmond last weekend gave us a good idea that the short tracks are – kind of still the short tracks like you still fight really similar things and while you may not have the same issues with things like wheel hop and stuff like that it's still you know loose in tight in the center loose off kind of the standard standard stuff and we still weren't good on short runs we were still really good on long runs so it's was, it was pretty typical of us and um i think it'll hopefully you know still be still be a good uh place for us and kind of on a similar note, too, with the bigger brakes, does it still look like Martinsville, you think, the way that the race plays out, the way that drivers race each other? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think this car, you know, it definitely lends itself to being more aggressive. It's not nearly as fragile as the old car was. But, um, yeah, I mean, we have more braking power than we have grip. So, like Richmond, you don't have much grip to lean on the car getting into the corner. So you have a ton of brake power, but you can't really use it. And I think – you know, this will be pretty similar to that. So uh, excited to, to see how it works out. Thanks. We're going to go to Jermaine, and then we'll go right behind him to Mark. Well, good afternoon, Alex. Jermaine Farrell, WFXR, Roanoke, Virginia. Um, two, I have two questions for you. The first one, this race has gone from 500 laps to 400 laps. Just your thoughts about that and how you feel that will impact everything. I think it's great. Um, I, I think – it's not going to impact the race very much. Uh, it's still a, a long day around this place for sure. So it's not like it's a short one, but um, stage lengths kind of change a little bit, but uh, I think it'll, it'll look similar. And I think it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a, a good move and uh, hopefully put, puts on an exciting show for the fans. And then, you know, last fall, you know, you put your name in the record book, obviously 75 years of the Martinsville Speedway. You know, how, how neat is it to actually, you know, get that win and just be a part of that winning tradition that all the drivers, because they strive and they love getting that grandfather clock and love having their name as a winner of a Martinsville Speedway race? Yeah, it's really special to have a win here. Uh, obviously, it's a really special trophy and um, had some controversy, but, but still super cool to be able to win here. It means a lot to me. It's a place that I honestly struggled at quite a bit at first and, uh, felt like I've worked really hard to get better at, and, and lately we have been pretty successful here. So um, hopefully we get another one this weekend. Go to Mark. Uh, Mark Garrow, PRN. Alex, I'm doing a story a little bit up, up ahead of things, um, doing a story on Dover, you guys finishing top four last year. Did you? How big a deal was that? Did you understand the historical significance of all four of you guys finishing top four, and, and what was that like? Yeah, I think post-race, looking back at it, we all immediately understood and uh, realized how special it was. So, you know, some things that we got to do throughout the week, like the, the photo that we were able to take on Monday morning, uh, stuff like that was, was really cool and um, pretty special to, uh, to be a part of that and to have been on the, the front side of it as well. What was it like in the closing laps when it all of a sudden looked like that was a possibility? I mean... How do you how do you race? You're racing to win. You you've got the lead. Everybody's trying to line up. Just what was that like? And was there a lot of pressure at that point? Now that you had it lined up. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I didn't know that we were one two three four until after the race was over. So um, I was just trying to to hold the five off and win the race and um, kind of business as as usual until post race. And I have one other question about Talladega. What did you think of the drafting at Daytona, and what do you expect uh, with the new next-gen car? And what do you expect at Talladega? Yeah, we got stuck with flat tires and four laps down pretty quickly in Daytona. So uh, hopefully we can have a better day in Talladega. I think 
you know, the draft is similar but different. Uh, it's still super speedway racing, and I think Talladega is going to be uh, pretty similar to Daytona, as they always are. So looking forward to trying to get some some redemption from the 500. We'll go to Jordan in the front row. Jordan Bianchi, The Athletic. Bristol Dirt next week. <laughs> uh, year two of this, um, how do you feel going into this this year compared to a year ago and kind of what's going on to try to make this improved? Yeah, so it's all, it feels all new again, right? With uh, with a new car and, and not knowing what to expect on, on how the car drives. So uh, looking forward to it. I think it being a night race is obviously a great call. Um, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Hopefully we eliminate some of the struggles from last year, whether it's the dust or the mud and the l just lack of being able to see, really. Uh, I would like to be able to see where my race car is traveling. But uh, other than that, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. If Bristol next week doesn't go as, as hopeful as people are thinking it will, um, would you like to see the dirt experiment continue at a different track, like a more of a dirt track itself? Or should NASCAR just say, you know what, we're sticking to paved race tracks? Um, you know, I think as far as dirt tracks that are that size, like you're the same same things are going to happen wherever we go with with vision and stuff. Um, you know, I think like Arca is a good example of of being able to make it work really successfully, but they're running basically on rubber uh, when they go to the miles. So um, I don't know. I think the dirt thing's really cool. I enjoy it. Uh, we were really strong last year until we broke a transmission. So I'm all for it. Um, hopefully the sequential is a little harder to break for me and. And we, I don't create my own issue there again and have to ride around in third gear all day. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think it's fun. The cars are really fun to drive. Uh, obviously, it pr presents its own unique set of challenges, and we've only had one try to get it right so far. And um, I think, you know, the, the more we do it, the, the better it's going to get. We'll go in the third row right there. It's uh, Aaron McFarling with the Roanoke Times. I'm just curious about the weather tomorrow night. It's going to be kind of cold. I'm curious if that has any effect on a driver when it's cold like that and, and what effect it might have on the track itself. Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing is typically when it's that cold, the racetrack has a lot of grip. Uh, tire fall off's not as bad as it is when it's real hot and slick. Uh, from my side, Greg texted me earlier this week and took all my – cooling stuff out of the car so uh, hopefully it actually is cold if it gets hot tomorrow night I'm gonna be complaining but uh, yeah I mean I think it'll just be a little different from the the tire fall off side of things but um, still it, it really doesn't change a whole lot any final questions for Alex we go to Dustin and then to Kelly Dustin Long, NBC Sports. Um, obviously, this year, seven different winners to start the season. Last year started in a very similar way, went a little bit longer than that. Is that is there a reason you see this? Is it is it just coincidence that we've that the season has started off like this? And you know, at, at this time, you know that when that was going on last year, everybody thought, hey, there's going to be 16 or more different winners by the regular season. That's that talk has already started. Do you do you buy into that, or do you say, look? people are going to the, the regulars or people are going to win multiple times and there's not going to be 16 different winners. Yeah. I mean, I think people probably will win multiple times. Um, for me, I don't really pay attention to that stuff a lot. I kind of focus on my own thing and my weeks and just trying to go to the racetrack and do the best job I can. Uh, but my opinion, like I think you'll see people win multiple times. Um, I don't think you'll see 16 winners, but maybe you will. So, um, I guess we'll wait and see. Are you surprised it started off this way just like last year? Not really. Like, I think the new car uh, is obviously, you know, guys are figuring it out week to week. Big gains are being made right now. So, um, not surprised to see so many winners at all. Thank you. Yep. Go to Kelly. Kelly Crandallracer.com. Alex, with the, speaking of this car, it seems like everywhere we go, it's giving us a little bit of something different in terms of the racing a is that a good thing for the series and b is that a good thing or a good sign of what this car can do yeah i mean i i think it's good um it's like anything like the old car had tracks that it put on a really great show and tracks that left a little bit to be desired with it and i think this car is going to have places that it puts on a better show than others and 
Um, that's kind of how it is with any race car. So I think it's been really good. Um, you know, we're all fighting our own individual struggles with it, whether it's, you know, guys dealing with pedal stuff or seat stuff or handling stuff, whatever it is. And, um, it's been a big learning process, which has been fun to have something new that you're not familiar with. And it's not the same as it's been for feels like forever. So, um, I've been enjoying it and, and I think it's been really good. All right, Alex. Well, thanks for joining us. Good luck this weekend here at Martinsville. Thanks.